Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. There is a story here about uh, an SMP MSP, uh, Corkab Stewart. I don't know how you pronounce her name. I'm going to say Corkab. If it's wrong, please correct me in the comments. She's saying that only the SNP speak for the voice of Scotland. Now, apart from the fact that this is laughably wrong, since uh, the SNP are a minority of Scottish voters, it's also one of those examples of where hatred and division can be stoked so easily. Because the implication is if you don't vote for the SNP, you don't have Scotland's best interests at heart, or that you don't represent the people of Scotland. That way lies madness. That way, of course, is the basis of National Socialism. It was the very, very ploy used by the Nazis. Uh, you've got to be careful what you say early in a video. Uh, in 1930s, early 1930s Germany, the Beer Hall Push basically started that whole thing of if you don't listen to us, you are against Germany. And how that ended up is, of course, a matter of history. It's not a good look. But then she strikes, people, she strikes me as someone who kind of doesn't understand the historical connection by saying that your party speaks for the entire nation. It's very dangerous. Let's have a look at this moron and why she is wrong. Here you go. So the SNP are told that they don't own Scotland, as an MSP claims that only her party have Scottish voices. And of course, we know that's a load of old rubbish. Is she saying that uh, all of her supporters don't speak for Scotland? They're pro-independence. Is she saying the Greens don't speak for Scotland? They're pro-independence. And what about the vast majority of people who don't want independence? The Tories, Labour, the Lib Dems, the independents. Do they not count? Are they subhuman in your mind? Do they not have voices? Do they not represent the voices of real people? Is that what the SNP stands for? Them and us. Let us create an Untermensch. The Untermensch, in this case, being the uh, the Unionists. Very hierarchical, don't you think? Glasgow Kelvin MSP Corkab Stewart was blasted on social media after claiming that only nationalist M MPs at Westminster have Scottish voices. as She was accused of stoking the disgusting divisions of nationalism. Of course, of course, but then she is. That, she's doing it with an open hand. I would have expected it to be a closed hand. That's more like it. Heil. That's the direction of travel for that party, isn't it? Uh, an SNP backbench MSP was slapped down by opposition politicians for promoting the disgusting divisions of nationalism after claiming that only her party's MPs have Scottish voices, which is very strange because I've heard other people who are MPs and they do definitely have Scottish voices. Uh, Stuart was told that the Nationalists do not own Scotland, far, far from it, I think, and that she was forced to defend her comments. And indeed, the, the, she'll, be, she'll be shown to see how few people are actually um, independent-minded uh, SNP supporters come the next election, when over half the SNP's uh, MPs will have gone. They'll be off the pitch. Uh, and that's through voting, of course. Some are going to go uh, because they're re retiring. And it may be, and this is what I don't think anyone's ever considered this. If you look at the numbers and the polls and be, oh, this many go, but half of them. And I'm not, I'm, I might have to do some research on this. How many of the ones that have announced they're, uh, they're leaving are in what are considered safe seats that would have been retained in the election if the polling is right? Because it may be that because you're changing one there, the people don't like the person who's coming in or they don't know, they're not familiar with the one that's coming in. That may cost a few votes as well. They may even lose more. Who knows? But I don't know which seats. We'll have to check that out. That's a, that's a bit of research. Anyway, in a sign that Hamza Yousaf's party are getting desperate to cling on to its seats at Westminster, it knows it's done. Of course it's desperate. Uh, it's adopted a strategy of claiming that only they will stand up for the country's interests in the House of Commons. But of course they don't stand up for the country's interests. They only stand up for the SNP interests. And the two are not the same. The SNP want to destroy Scotland's oil industry. They're looking to destroy, uh, destroy its whiskey industry. They want to destroy its fishing industry. The whole gamut. They want to put taxes onto business, taxes onto people. None of these things are standing up 
for Scotland's best interests. All of them are standing up for the uh, for the SNP's interests because all that extra money they're trying to raise is going on independence. The last thing Scotland wants, as proven by just about every poll and the last referendum. So it is complete bullshit that they're standing up for Scotland. They're the ones destroying it. Uh, voters have also been told that their votes don't matter in the grand scheme of things. That was by Hamza Yousaf telling SNP voters that their votes don't matter. Uh, Sir Keir Starmer has already won the election. That's fine then. All you SNP voters, your votes don't matter. Don't bother voting. You've already lost the election. Never mind. Move on. Miss Stewart tweeted along the lines on Sunday as she responded to her First Minister's interview with Laura Koonsberg, where she pleaded with Sir Keir to work with him. She wrote, Starmer doesn't need Scottish seats to win the election. Voting SNP helps ensure there's a loud Scottish voice in the ear of the next Labour government. Do you know, the funny thing is, it doesn't matter what the makeup of the uh, of the, the, the votes are. There will be 58 or whatever it is, 57 seats. It's 59 at the moment, isn't it? But I think the boundary changes and I think it reduces. I'm not sure. Again, I have to get up on that one. I think it's, I think it goes down to 57, but I will check. Anyway, those voices will all be Scottish voices. They will all be standing there or sitting there in the uh, in the Commons. They will have their say, the same as the Welsh, the same as the Northern Irish, the same as the North of England, the same as the South West. They're all equal. One voice, one man, one vote. Even if that man's a woman. <laughs> anyway, she was accused of promoting the worst form of nationalism with her comment that only nationalist politicians spoke up for Scotland, which we know is bollocks. Scottish Tory deputy leader Megan Gallagher was damning in her criticism as she said to suggest that only SNP MPs are loud Scottish voices shows you everything that's wrong with the nationalist movement. There is so much wrong with the nationalist movement. I could write a book. Uh, you can be a strong Scottish voice without being a nationalist. Perhaps someone should remind the Nats that they do not own Scotland. And fellow Tory MSP Sue Webber added, any MP, irrespective of party, is a Scottish voice in Westminster. This MSP is convener of the Equal Co Equalities Committee in the Scottish Parliament. Couldn't You wouldn't believe it though, would she? She doesn't like some people. Some people are better than other people. How does that thing sit well with equalities? The SNP have long attempted to blur the lines between party and Scottish government and with the polling looking bleak for Mr Yousaf, he's trying to turn the ship around by claiming the general election is only really important in England. I think you'll find it's important to you because if you get your ass handed to you, you're out of a job, Yousaf, and I, for one, can't wait. I will totally want to see that one go. I mean, that would be the biggest flush, wouldn't it? And out. Glasgow is expected to turn all red. Every seat in Glasgow, Labour. And there's him, the MSP for Pollock. Good luck. Anyway, I shall round off there. She doesn't speak for Scotland. She's full of shite. They all are. And she is um, a National Socialist. She may as well just go stomp in and march her way into Poland with a nice Hugo Boss outfit. Deary me. What an ignorant twonk. Anyway, I'm coming up. The problem with the likes of Corkup Stewart is she doesn't understand that by creating division, by stoking those differences, by highlighting the other as the bad guy, it creates hate and hate in large quantities is always damaging. And imagine if that hate directed at the English, which is what it predominantly is. Well, the English wouldn't go to Scotland. Why would they? Why would the English come to Scotland? If they're hated so much. Now all that money, because tourism is massive and a lot of that tourism is English going north. That's a lot of money out of the economy. Whole economies, whole swathe of the economy dies because of her personal hatred and loathing. And yet there's nothing she can do about it. She's on the wrong side of history and she knows it. And they're about to be handed their arse. But hate-filled individuals like her can do nothing about it. They cannot help themselves. They're too stupid to see it. Well, we'll have to vote them out. And that's the only way hand the SNP such a major drubbing that Humza has to go, Kate will be in, Kate will change things up a bit and get rid of some of the extremists. And then come the next election, come the Holyrood election, 
even further. Because even SNP supporters now see that the party's gone too far, there's too much division, too much hate, and that it's just plain bonkers. Especially as they're watching people die. I shall stop. Thank you very much for watching. Do please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, leave a like, leave a comment, please share the video. And let's hope that Scotland does not descend into civil war. Bye.